The core gameplay experience of Halo Infinite is fantastic, but there are some issues with everything else around that gameplay, such as the battle pass, XP, missing features, the shop, and playlists, and much more. And in this video, we're going to provide constructive criticisms to Halo Infinite and how all of this can be fixed. So stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. How's it going Halo fans? Kevin here once again giving you a gameplay commentary. Today we're doing a little bit of a discussion about the progression and everything else around Halo Infinite's gameplay itself. Because though the gameplay is great, there are some things around it that definitely can be improved. I mean, like greatly improved. It kind of struck me the other day that I would say that Halo Infinite's multiplayer experience is probably the most well-liked multiplayer since Halo 3 back in 2007, ever since Reach in 2010, it's been a divided community, sprint, no sprint, hit scan, projectile, battle rifle, no battle rifle, just like everything, it just like it's customization, loadouts and things like that. It's been an identity crisis since Halo Reach. And I think this is the first game we feel really solid about the gameplay itself, but everything else around the gameplay itself does need some work. In this video, we're gonna discuss how we can fix a lot of these problems. So if you guys like these kind of commentary videos, make sure you tap that like button. It really helps out the video and channel get a better place within that YouTube algorithm. If you want to stay updated with the news, with everything going on with Halo as we ramp up to the official release very soon of Halo Infinite, make sure you tap subscribe. So let's get right into the content here. First thing I want to dive into is the Battle Pass. Well, all right, it definitely could use some improvements, especially for you free to play players. I think you guys deserve a lot more for playing Halo Infinite and it seems like right now with the Battle Pass for the free tier, you're not really getting a whole lot. You can see within this list of all the free items within the Battle Pass that the majority of it are challenge swaps, which almost seems a bit contradictory really because if you're utilizing challenge swaps, you're using those so you can get XP to grind through the Battle Pass, but the Battle Pass for free to play players is mainly challenge swaps. So you're basically using swaps to get more swaps. Yes, there is armor customization out there, but if you can just see from this picture itself, not a whole lot. For actual armor customization, the stuff that I think people really care about, you get four visors, five coatings, three chest pieces, one set of shoulder pads, and two helmets with a different wrist customization as well. So kind of like one extra little bit of armor customization. Now, yes, Halo Infinite is a free to play game. So you want to reward people or incentivize them from jumping into the paid version of the battle pass. But the thing is like, you gotta reward people for their time on playing your game. And it seems like right now that the way the free battle pass looks, it's not very uh, rewarding to play through. I think the paid tier is totally fine. You have different armor customization, you have different cores you can unlock and kits and coatings and things like that. It's all gravy. Especially since we're seeing some basic level armor sets that we had like back in Halo Reach now being sold in the store. It just doesn't feel right. And 343 really should try to reward players who just play the game. That is a very beneficial thing for Halo. And if you're basically going through the free battle pass, to, you know, use challenge swaps to get more XP to get more challenge swaps, basically, it just doesn't really feel like you're playing the game for what you want. Though I think one really great way to alleviate a lot of the issues that people are having with the pay tier and the free tier is actually provide some in-game currency for people to unlock things within the game. Like I said earlier, for people just playing the game, de being dedicated players, that is absolutely huge. And I feel like you can't take that for granted, especially as Halo, I feel like needs to kind of offer more than other companies have to do because we're kind of, as a community, coming from the ground back up again. And we're setting ourselves up to do really well because Halo Infinite's gameplay and the multiplayer is clearly the best multiplayer that's been released this year. And so one way to incentivize people to play is by giving them some free money. This isn't completely new or any kind of foreign thought. Like I know Call of Duty's Battle Pass does this. You earn free COD points, which you can use within the store or use it to buy another Battle Pass. This is what I think help out a lot of like issues when it comes to the microtransactions, where if you're at least able to earn some in-game currency for just playing the game, then I think that would be super useful. Or even for those free to play players, it would get them to buy into the Battle Pass, right? So then their grind of unlocking channel swaps would feel way less monotonous. Ideally for my experience, would love to see just like if you grind all the way through level 100 of the battle pass it earns you a free battle pass i would love to see that happen for free to play players and for paid players also as well or you can just use that for different kind of customization within the store then i'd make the store prices way less uh high and since we're talking about the store so much let's just jump right into that topic now and from my experience like i 
don't really care that there is a store. I'm glad that Halo Infinite's gone free to play. I expected the battle pass. I expected microtransactions. And I expected there was a store for there to be a store. Uh, but the thing is, like, I don't mind the store being there. But the issue is, like, the pricing on a lot of the items, I just don't really agree with. I just don't think the value is there for, like, those $20 sets that we have. They give you, like, a unique armor, coating. Uh, they also give you, like, a stance and some emblems and things like that. But for $20, that seems a bit high, especially since 343 is charging $60 for the longest campaign that we've ever had, according to Joseph Staten. Do you think buying three sets of armor coatings in the, or whatever within the battle pass would give you enough enjoyment or feel like you had your money's worth spent $60 in the store compared to $60 for a campaign? It just doesn't really feel right. That's what didn't rub me the right way either when it came to Halo 5's rec packs, where you can spend $60 on rec packs within Halo 5. But do you feel like you still got the same amount of content within that battle packs compared to the actual game itself? Probably not. Especially since a lot of these armor sets that they've had in the store so far are pretty standard stuff, like nothing too crazy or outlandish or something that would stand out to make you feel unique, which is kind of the whole point of spending money for customization is to make yourself feel like you're standing out amongst the crowd. And also selling like basic armor sets that we've had in previous Halo games within the store just doesn't feel right. You can see right here within the Reach Falcon pilot pack, you get these shoulder pads, which were directly from Halo Reach. I actually used to rock this shoulder pad and it kind of makes me a little upset that I can't unlock it without having to spend seven bucks to get it. I just feel like this should be something that should be unlocked through gameplay or through the battle pass or some capacity. Or maybe have it be like a weekly challenge unlock. You get one of these shoulder pads and maybe another week you get the other side or something like that. Now, customization like this, I would be totally expect to have to pay some money for this. This is really unique armor coating, kind of coloring, kind of whatever the heck this is. I don't know, it's some pineapple grenades. And so that's something unique and fun that would warrant to pay money for, not just for like a regular old shoulder shoulder pad or armor set, something that's unique and stands out. That's what people will pay for. Now I've seen like the scary headline that's probably going around for a few YouTube videos saying that like, oh, it's gonna be like over a thousand dollars to earn everything within the store. I can't believe 343 is trying to price gouge us for everything in Halo. The thing is, that's not the design of Halo Infinite. It's fundamentally designed to be like these other shooters out there like Call of Duty, Fortnite, uh, Apex Legends, and things like that, where you're not supposed to have everything. The idea is to just spew out so much content, so many things for people to buy that they just kind of pick and choose what they want. Though I like I touched on my previous point that spending like $20 for a pack seems a bit egregious, though to some people that might be worth it. But again, like those whales out there that probably would just go ahead and spend $1,000 on the multiplayer, which I don't know why they would, but hey, there's people out there. I think this is going to be like the biggest point of growth within the Halo community is that every Halo game we've had previously, first of all, we've grown to understand like we get everything right we unlock everything within the game through gameplay and it's a bit of a collection game in a way when it comes to different armor sets and things like that but Halo Infinite's gonna work a little different. Now I've seen arguments, people saying, oh, I'll gladly spend $60 and to not have to deal with all this stuff. Well, there's games out there that still charge 60 bucks and still do the exact same things as Halo Infinite. Especially since paying 60 bucks nowadays for a full game really isn't that much. And think about it, games have stayed at the $60 price point for decades now, not taking any consideration into inflation. We're actually paying a lot less money for our games now than we did back then. Let me show you why. Because this inflation calculator showcases like in 2000, if you spent $60 in 2021, that equivalent would be nearly $100. So yeah, which just bumped the price of the game up to hundred bucks, not have to deal with microtransactions whatsoever. I mean, I would still buy Halo Infinite, but that would hold off a lot of people from playing. Cause I really do feel that the free to play service battle pass model that Halo Infinite has is the right move for the franchise. And while we're also kind of talking about customization, why can't we have coatings for all armor cores? I mean, why? That has to be like a mentally chosen decision to not allow that because we see all these different coatings work for the armor cores, which have very different armor sets within those cores as well. So it can't be just like a different kind of core kind of issue right there. I mean, like the Halo Reach Mark V core looks very similar to like the Mark VII core for Halo Infinite. It's heavily influenced by it and that we can't have like cross core coatings. It just doesn't make any sense to me, I'm sorry. Now, a big talking point within the community has been XP and progression. Mainly XP though, which there have already been three changes within the first three weeks of this game being out. I've been seeing a lot of arguments on Reddit and also on YouTube about saying we want performance-based XP earnings. Well, yeah, I can understand it feeling kind of underwhelming where if you go 30 and five or five and 30, you're still earning the same amount of XP. 
Though I personally don't agree with performance-based XP, mainly because it just make it benefits higher skilled players. And for most of us, people who are like on YouTube and are on Reddit and you know in these gaming communities, we are dedicated players, so we know how to play the game better. There's a lot of people who are really worse than you at Halo. And do you think it's fair for you to progress further than somebody else who paid the same exact amount of money? Things get a little tricky because of the way 343 is monetizing progression and customization that you don't want lesser skilled players to feel like they're getting left out because they suck at the game compared to higher skilled players. But people think like that would incentivize people to do well, to want to win and play the game as like it's really intended. And I really don't think that would be the case. I feel like it's always kind of been a thing within Halo that most people just kind of play for kills and kind of play the objective. Like literally every objective game I've ever played for a shooter, most people focus on the kills and kind of play the objective. Though one way you could could incentivize players to jump on the objectives and play the game more as intended would certainly be having challenges that would incentivize players to do so. Like a lot of the reason why people aren't like picking up the ball and oddballs because they're trying to get like their X amount of kills with a commando. Well, they need to have more challenges saying like win this type of game, hold the ball for this amount of time, return this many flags. And we are seeing that within the challenge system, which is great. I'm seeing a lot more of it, honestly, which is fantastic. But I think that would be a real way to incentivize people because I don't think really people care too much about like winning or losing for the most part. I think people really care about making that progress and getting that customization. And if you incentivize people with that, rather than just a win, then I think you got something special because the way the skill-based matchmaking works, especially in quick play, it's just kind of 50-50. Like it's meant to kind of balance things out. Another thing with like the way progression works is that it feels so temporary and week to week because that's all there is right now, daily challenges and weekly challenges. I would love to see some more long-term challenges or maybe accommodations or something like that, like we had in Halo 5 and also like we have right now with seasonal challenges with the MCC that gives you a reason to keep playing beyond just like your weekly and daily challenges. I've seen so many people make the argument that like, oh, my challenges are done, so I have no reason why to play Halo Infinite anymore. And at that point, I'm kind of asking you like, well, why do you play the game in the first place? But that's a whole nother discussion right there. I think one thing that really helped incentivize people to keep playing the game longer and longer would have some more long-term challenges that would have some appropriately balanced XP earnings as well. Probably give you like a free tier or something like that within the battle pass would be fantastic. Now, there are a couple missing features I would really like to see come back in Halo Infinite. One of them certainly being a service record in-game or on Waypoint or just in some capacity in an official way from 343. Because right now, you can't really track your stats within Halo, which is something we've always been able to do and pretty much every shooter out there for the most part allows you to do so. I don't know what the holdup is on this. I'm sure there's some interconnected systems that maybe like 343 is waiting on to put into the game eventually or something like that. Because we see there are third party websites out there that are already doing stat tracking like Halo Tracker that basically tracks everything you would want to know within your Halo experience. I don't know why we can't have that on Halo Waypoint or in game. I don't think 343 has really discussed why rather than just not saying that it's not there. Especially if you have accommodations added into the game to give you some reward for XP and things like that. You're like, oh, I need 10,000 sniper headshots in campaign or something like that, you know? That would be something that you keep track of in your service record. Also, how do you tell that you're improving in the game overall compared to just like game to game? Service record is a great way to give like players like that carry at the end of the stick where you see that KDA number going up, you're like, hey, I'm improving, this is getting better. That gets super addictive, at least for me it does. And talking about that number going up and up as you keep playing, an XP system outside of progression would be greatly appreciated. Something along the lines of like we have with the MCC right now, where basically you just, however you perform with like medals and also how many games you play and things like that. Well, you get a nice little shiny badge next to your name, and you flex how much Halo you've actually played. In this case, I'm all for performance-based XP earnings, just to kind of flex how much you play Halo, how good you are at it and things like that. I mean, personally, I don't really care for it because I just like playing the gameplay itself. But I can totally understand and people wanting to grind out higher ranks just to kind of have that cool badge next to your name or just have a sense of accomplishment. It's really important for a lot of games out there now. Now 343 has stated that they are wanting to implement an XP system like a like we had with MCC, but it's gonna take some time. So I wouldn't, and it made it sound like it wouldn't really happen at least within the first year of Halo Infinite being out, which is a shame. Again, doesn't really break my heart. It's not gonna stop me from playing the game or make me play the game anymore than I already am but it would just be a really nice thing to show. Also, once they finally implement an XP system like that, would there be some kind of retroactive way to kind of reward players who've been playing throughout the entirety of that time? I mean, I would hope so, but we don't know until it actually happens. 
Now that the game has been out for a few weeks, I've been seeing this issue pop up a lot and I kind of started agreeing with it as well, is the playlist offerings aren't exactly where they need to be right now for Halo Infinite. Awkward cut. Hey everyone, Kevin from the future here. Uh, yes, I knew in the section that 343 is releasing new playlists like Free For All, Swan, Fiesta has permanent playlists right now, but I think the points that I make between like the playlists that we expect to be there at launch aren't there and they so quickly being patched in already just kind of shows that like why did we have to ask for this this is something that we should already get but back to the discussion on, on point here i mean for me personally just for me it's actually totally fine i'm actually totally fine with the way the playlist system works right now just for me this is me being super selfish because Basically, I just play BTB with some objective in there. I basically play Slayer with some objective modes as well, and I like to play ranked. Those are like the three things I like to do in Halo when it comes to multiplayer, and that's already there. So I am totally fine with it. I don't really care to play Griff Ball or SWAT or Snipers or literally or Infection or any of these other kind of like more niche modes because selfishly, that's just not my thing. But I do know that there is certainly a community there, and I was kind of expecting all that stuff to be there at launch, and it's not. So one thing I would love to see come into Halo Infinite eventually, hopefully within the first year, is a match composer, much like we have with MCC or like what Call of Duty has as well, where basically you get to select your game modes and things like that that you want to play and you get to have fun doing it that way. I mean, the population is certainly there for Halo Infinite. At the time of recording this video on December 2nd, the peak player count was about 117,000 players. Nice, by the way. And that's just on Steam alone. They're not keeping track of any of the Xbox or Game Pass users as well. So there's more than that. So there's plenty of people playing Halo Infinite. I don't know why we have to be funneled down these tiny little avenues for play sessions. This really hurts into the challenge system as well, where like I have a challenge where it's win a stockpile game, which sounds super easy and just eventually you'll do it kind of thing. But the problem is you have one BTB playlist, three game modes in there, and not always you get stockpile like and especially on top of that it's kind of a 50 50 chance even if you win that stockpile match and so it could take quite some time i remember i had to play a total control match in btv it took me like it felt like an hour just to complete a match of total control within btv because oftentimes you get ctf you'll get a little slayer you'll get some total control you get some stockpile mixed in there as well so you have a good mix of modes within sing one single playlist and it just feels like something that's completely out of your control in that situation. So having a match composer that will let you queue up for stockpile in BTB would make things a lot easier to complete those kind of challenges. Not even easier, just more reasonable, honestly. Not even just like trying, I'm not trying to make it easy. It just seems more reasonable. And also just more general playlist options would be great. Like I mentioned earlier, bringing back keeping Fiesta as a permanent mode rather than tied to the Tenray event, which just seems to be the case with that event. Uh, you, get, you know, bring back SWAT, bring back snipers. We need a permanent free-for-all playlist. Like free-for-all is a great way for people to make their name within the com competitive community as well. Even though, yes, that's a super small niche, but like, Every main shooter, like every arena shooter out there, like a 4v4, 6v6, whatever kind of shooter out there, has a free-for-all mode. I don't know why we don't have it in Halo Infinite. It just would make total sense. But one thing I do really like though, is that the competitive playlist is one playlist. There's only one ranked playlist, and I actually really like that. That's one of the things I actually was hoping for to happen in Halo Infinite, because having all these different ranked modes, it just kind of divides up the players who want to like sweat and try hard in the game, right? And I would think that you just want to play like the competitive settings if you wanted to get sweaty and try hard in the game. So that's one thing about the playlist I'd actually praise about that. I like having just one dedicated ranked playlist and everything else being social. I think that totally makes sense. You know, one thing that we can't do as a community as a whole is just be hyperbolic and toxic with a lot of people, especially with 343. I mean, a lot of people at that company are trying their ass off to make the best game they possibly can. I've met many of these developers, they're all huge fans of Halo, and when they see like a lot of hateful comments online, it really does affect like your motivation to really try your best with because you just figure out oh, someone's gonna hate it anyways. Why do it? Like I've seen like posts saying like, oh 343 are big boys and girls and they can handle the criticism and things like that. Uh, saying that, you know, Halo Infinite's monetization is just as egregious, if not more than Battlefront 2. Like a, a comparison between Battlefront 2? Dude, that game broke the gaming community as a whole like the entire industry took notice of what was happening with Battlefront 2. They nearly lost the license to Star Wars. I think it actually kind of led them down the line to lead the license to Star Wars for EA because of how egregious of their monetization of the gameplay element was for Battlefront 2. I've seen people saying like it's the worst free-to-play shooter progression out there. 
It's not. I've played plenty of free-to-play shooters. This one is just fine. It's not huge. It's not fantastic. It's not like the best thing. It certainly has room for improvement. And 343 is listening and looking. They want to improve this as well. It's certainly not the worst though. So my main thing is like you can be vocal. You can not like things 343 does and they will not like shun you. They won't banish you off into like the nether realms of the community. Like they listen to criticism, but you have to make it constructive. You have to be respectful. I've seen so many hateful comments on Twitter and on Reddit and just online in general where people are just being super toxic about the way the Halo Infinite progression works right now. And it's just like, that ain't it, Chief. Like, I'm not saying you have to like ask us super nicely or be like passive about your, your critiques. Like, I made, made like a 20 minute long video about my critiques about the multiplayer because I love this game and I want to see it succeed. And there's so much potential there that we're, we're, I feel like we're fortunate that we're arguing about monetization and progression and that the fundamentals of what makes a good Halo game like we have been doing since 2010 with Reach's release. So the main thing, guys, is have your opinions, but be civil about it. So if you guys are new to the channel or missing any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. I got a link to all my Halo Infinite news and informational videos we've been uploading daily about. So thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace out.